starts right now. Hi everyone, they are in Las Vegas while we are safely protected from the gaming tables here in the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. I'm Karen Bryant here with a couple of aces though. Bantamweight King who finally got his crown back, Mr. Dominic Cruz and top middleweight who will be facing Anderson Silva in just three weeks. That of course is Michael Bisping. Ariel Hawani, our UFC insider, will join us from Vegas in just a few. But Dom, let's get right to the business. Tomorrow's main event, or tomorrow's event, sorry, was originally UFC 196, but we had some injuries to the headliners. It means now FS1 is the new home. Our top bout is eighth ranked Stephen Thompson taking on number two, Johnny Hendricks. Yeah, Johnny Hendricks is the guy that you just can't ever put you close your eyes on. I mean, he's got power in both hands, but he wrangles you in with that right hand to land the overhand left, and if that left lands, it is over. He can also switch to uppercuts, nasty takedowns, powerful double legs. He's great against the cage. I mean, he's a, he's a championship package, and he's going against a guy that moves his feet well and uses karate, but it's nothing that Hendricks hasn't seen before because he's prepared himself to be a champion against anybody in the sport. Well, Johnny Hendricks has knockout power, but he's facing Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. This guy was a five-time world kickboxing champion, so it's no secret that he wants to keep it on the feet, but on the feet, this guy is devastating. He has beautiful spinning kicks, beautiful punches. He uses the footwork very, very well, and he is very, very fast. It only takes one shot from this guy. Spinning wheel kick to the face, and you can go down. Absolutely. Well, Michael, though, of course, Johnny Hendricks has had some weight issues in the past. A recent photo of Big Rig, though, yeah. and the conversation we have with him on UFC tonight makes it seem like everything's going to be on point. Do you, do you believe him when he says things? Yeah, things? absolutely. On UFC tonight, he said he was 174, which is three pounds over the weight limit, which is crazy. If he's that close, that tells me one thing. He's very, very focused and motivated. He's had, through, uh, he's had some adversity lately. He lost his title. He lost his restaurant. He changed camps. He wants to get his life back on track. What's the best way to do that? Make weight and win this fight. Unfortunately, sometimes losing and losing things is also what gets you back on track. And especially having a wrestling mentality and a, and a championship mindset, I see all the bad things that you just named, Bisping, mm -hmm. being something that creates a good thing it's motivation. for Hendricks. Yeah. It, well, it's he, motivation if you're the right person. He has said everything happens for a reason. In this way, he feels like all of those things came together to help him reinvent himself and be a brand new fighter. Well, over 20 hungry fighters are ready to weigh in out in Vegas. So we're going to send it to John Anik, who is standing by with the mic. Take it away, sir. Have fun out there. The official weigh-in for UFC Fight Night, Hendricks versus Thompson. Oh, is it great to be back here in Las Vegas? Thank you all so much for coming out. How about a hand our Octagon girls, Vanessa, Chrissy, Ariani, these talent relation guys taking their sweet time. Sean Shelby and Joe Silva. Lorenzo Fertitta is in the building. And of course, the veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. All right, let's kick this off with our UFC Fight Pass prelims, UFCFightPass.com. First up in the featherweight division, Artem, the Russian Hammer Lobov versus Alex, the Spartan White. How quickly things change in mixed martial arts. Alex White entered the UFC a 9-0 prospect. He won his UFC debut via KO. Since then, he's lost two in a row and hasn't fought since December of 2014. We've all seen Artem Lobov knock people out. He swings from the waist and goes for the chin every time. And it's not just in the octagon he likes to do that. We know he trains with Conor McGregor. And in training one day, he knocked out one of Conor's teeth and broke a bone in his face. So be careful. Artem Lobov equals hammer time. <laughs> One forty five. One forty five for the Russian hammer. All 
right, next up in the welterweight division, two fighters making their UFC debuts. Mickey Gall versus Mike The Truth Jackson. Mike Jackson is the first fighter to make his debut in the UFC since James Tony. We all know how that fight went. At the same time, former Golden Gloves champ and has not been shy about saying that he can knock anybody out with one punch, especially CM Punk. That's what he's saying. He says Mickey Gold only gets the shot because he's had one good fight, but Mike Jackson is the man that can beat them both. Self-proclaimed MMA journalist, and here he goes to get his MMA career started. Is it me or does he have a look of Demetrius Johnson? It's you. It's me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, he, he, I can see the stretched out Demetrius. 170 from Mike Jackson. And his opponent, please welcome Mickey Gall. Three months ago, Mickey Gall was an 0-0 23-year-old about to make his MMA debut. Today, he's about 24 hours away from maybe cashing in the biggest lottery ticket in mixed martial arts. A fight against CM Punk later on this year. Can you believe this guy? An unknown fighter, Dana White scouts him, he goes on looking for a fight. Now he's fighting on the fight pass prelims. If he wins this, he's fighting CM Punk. I mean, this is the stuff of fairy tales. It really is. It's uh, but talk about pressure. A lot of pressure on this young man. 174 and not to mention, Mickey Gall. Quite a lot of money to be made. Yes, well, that's certain. Yeah. I mean, let's be real. These guys are not facing each other in the fight. They're facing the organization, the lights, the walkout, the fans. I mean, this is going to be the biggest stage both these gentlemen has ever seen. All right, now we get to the FS1 UFC Fight Night prelims. First up in the featherweight division. Noah Neo Lahat versus Diego Pitbull Rivas. First fighter to the scale, Diego Rivas. Diego the Pitbull Rivas got his nickname from his teammates because in training he would always walk forward, taking a lot of damage but never took a step backwards. He started training at age 16 to help him distract himself from the passing of his mother. Since then he's gone on, he's undefeated and he's in the UFC. On Wednesday, the Jewish Federation of Las Vegas threw a party in honor of Noad Lahad, of course, the second Israeli-born fighter in the history of the UFC. He said it was a great thrill for him. He returns to action tomorrow night after taking a paternity leave after becoming a father late last year. Justin Scoggins trains out of South Carolina. He's a Kempo Karate practitioner and started martial arts by the age of three years old. He then transitioned to MMA by 16 and had his first pro MMA fight by 18 years old. He's now an IKF world kickboxing champion. Justin Scoggins is karate kicking his way through life.
125. 125 on the nose for Justin Scoggins. And his opponent currently ranked number 12 in the world, Ray Borg. Ray Borg is the youngest fighter on this weekend's card at 22 years old. He lost his UFC debut, but since then has gone a perfect 3-0. He has a record of 9-1 overall and comes with a lot of hype. Brian Stan says that one day Ray Borg will be the flyweight champion of the world, so keep an eye on this guy. 125. 125 for Ray Borg. Our next prelim is in the heavyweight division. Derek, the Black Beast, Lewis versus Damien, the Polish pit bull, Grabowski. You've heard of English pit bulls, you've heard of American pit bulls. Well, Damien Grabowski calls himself the Polish pit bull. He has a record of 20 and two. He's a jiu-jitsu specialist with very heavy hands. And some websites have him listed as the number one heavyweight coming out of Europe right now. I guess Alistair Overeem may want to have a word with him one day. And welcome to the FS1 UFC Fight Night weigh-in show. We'd like to welcome those of you who saw Yale defeat Columbia on FS1. And his opponent, the Black Beast, Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis got back on track in a big way at UFC 192. His 13th win, his 13th finish as well. By the way, he is one of two men to have defeated Jared Rochelle, who will be fighting in the co-main event tomorrow night against Roy Nelson. KJ Nunes is back at lightweight after a welterweight pit stop last year. He said he's been now working with a nutritionist to help get him down to 155. It used to be a burden for him, but he feels a lot more comfortable with the whole process. Let's see how he looks on the scale in a matter of seconds. You know, it's crazy that he's only discovering the right way to cut weight because KJ Nunes has been around forever. The guy was a professional boxer, kid boxer, been in the UFC and mixed martial arts for a long time. He's beat Nick Diaz. This guy is as experienced as they come. Put your arms down. I don't know what that is. Dominic, is that your brother from another mother? No, oh, I've heard that before. He's a handsome dude, though. I gotta give him. I gotta hand it to him. I don't mind. All right, I'll take that. Josh Berkman. He was a JUCO All-American running back for Dixie State. Actually pushed for 1,400 yards and 13 touchdowns. Very athletic individual. If you didn't know that about him, good college career. Ended up quit, quitting college and his scholarship to focus on MMA at 22 years old. Now here he is in the UFC. He loves to use any form of brute force, slams, power punching, rip your head off with a guillotine choke. Anything that you can basically force upon another individual is Josh Berkman's style. One fifty-six. One 
on. 56 for Josh. So he's heading into lightweight after losing a but fight yeah, to Patrick it, Cote. Yep. It's interesting to me to see how the power transitions to 155. Does he keep it? Does he change his, his aspects of fighting? Yep. What's he going to do? It. This is an interesting fight because I've trained with KJ Noons, and both these guys are power punchers. Yeah, when KJ lets his hands go, I mean, he is Serious. dangerous. Yeah. Yes. Both these guys are very dangerous. Welcome back to the desk in L.A. We are ready to weigh in the fighters on the six-fight main card, which you can see on FS1 Saturday night. Up next, Dominic, we have got welterweight veterans Mike Pyle and Sean Spencer taking the stage. The 28-year-old Spencer is up first. Sean Spencer comes from a seasoned Golden Glove boxing, uh, you know, style. He, he just always is throwing heat. He's always looking to land that overhand right. He work, currently right now is still a Lone Star title loans uh, expert in Dallas, Texas, and also works at Title Boxing Club. Two jobs while he's still competing on the UFC stage. It's not easy to live that way, but it's kind of how it has to be sometimes. Let's check his weight. 170. 170 for Sean Spencer. And his opponent fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Mike Pio. The 40-year-old Pyle enters tomorrow night on the very first two-fight losing streak of his 17-year career. New territory for Mike Pyle, also new territory for him. He now owns a fly fishing apparel company called Fish on Energy, which he says is doing fantastic. You know, that's funny because a lot of fighters, they all get into the apparel industry. <laughs> I like the fact that Mike Pyle, you know, went against the curb and opened, started a fly fishing apparel. Fly fishing apparel, fishing apparel it's because different. it's important. 170 for Mike Pyle. Mike Pyle coming in into this fight, guys, is the underdog at a plus 145. Spencer, a minus 175. You've got to look good when you're fly fishing. Absolutely. He's still keeping the Tennessee waterfall mullet, too, which I love. Yeah, Mike Pyle is a true veteran of the game. Absolutely. Love watching this guy fly. Yeah, he's fun. You have to fly fish and wear a mullet. You do. You like pretty much do. Together. Versus Alex, the Spartan Nicholson. Alex Nicholson is quite the underdog in this matchup, and it's actually surprising to me because he's very well-rounded. He's got five back-to-back -back wins, all first-round finishes, and at the same time, he's extremely scrappy. He's one of those guys that can be losing and losing and then come back and knock you out. He considers himself a basketball brawler turned technical. Fell in love with the sport after getting his butt kicked. And you know, I'll tell you, wow. coming from that kind this. of background is interesting. Oh my Look at goodness. this, hold on, here we wait go. Wait a minute, oh. wait a minute. A proposal. Congratulations to yes. the proposal. Future, Mr. Could you imagine if she said no? Yeah. Alex Make the way first, honey, and then I'll say yes. <laughs> Good for him. Imagine if he misses way. What can you say about him after that, except that he's getting married, it looks like? Awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Commiserations. <laughs> the commission guy didn't tell him to put his arms down. He didn't want to spoil the moment. This could be the worst weekend of his life. We just got married, and he's he's fighting somebody who's 201. a minus 1100. 201 for Alex Nicholson. I don't know about the marriage part. You would know better than me, but and his opponent, please welcome Misha Serkunov. Yeah, as we said, he's in for a tough time tomorrow because Misha Serkinov is the biggest favorite on the card. He's a minus 1,100 favorite, which is absolutely massive. And that's for good reason. I mean, if you look at his resume, he's won nine of his last 10. He's finished eight opponents in the first round, five wins by KO, jiu-jitsu black belt. You put all those things together, you've got a very formidable opponent. And of course, your guy is distracted because he just proposed to his, uh, <laughs> his fiance. Great shape for a heavyweight Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Two oh six. Two oh six for Misha. And I agree with you, Mike. I think that Alex Nicholson having that on his mind is is a is a you know distraction. Light heavyweight, by the way. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that could be a distraction, but we'll see. as we can good. see here, you know, he's all business. But Nicholson. He was smiling a little bit, you know, and it can be a distraction. I get it. All right, next up in the flyweight division, stage. Joseph Benavidez versus Zach Funsize Makovsky. <laughs> Makovsky is a Division I wrestler. 
out of Drexel University. Also has a BJJ purple belt under Marcelo Garcia. And if you know anything about jiu-jitsu, you know Marcelo I Garcia. I don't. Well, I, that's actually a valid point. That's why I'm explaining this to you, Bisping. I know nothing. <laughs> Graduated with a bachelor's in science and biology at Drexel, who was given the nickname Fun Size by female MMA pioneer Tara LaRosa. I mean, Fun Size, I guess being 125, I can see it. Okay, I I'm gonna say nothing. 125. 125 for Zach Makovsky. And his opponent is the number one ranked flyweight contender, Joseph Benavidez. You know, Joseph Benavidez is a true professional. Of course, when we fight, you know, it's nothing personal. And Benavidez takes this to another level. When I fought Brian Stan, Benavidez fought Demetrius Johnson for the title. And when we went to Toronto for the press conference, the UFC very kindly gave us some Coldplay tickets. I took one of my pad men. Joseph Benavidez was three rows in front of me with Demetrius Johnson. <laughs> they went on a nice, cozy little date together. They watched Coldplay. Um, and, and then they fought for five rounds in the octagon. So, you know, all credit to this guy. One twenty-five. One twenty-five. The odds on this one going to be there. minus four fifty. Makovsky plus three twenty-five. Were you that friendly when when you fought him, though? I can't say that I was. Not <laughs> even a little bit. All right, now we get to a feature bout in the light heavyweight division. Ovin St. Pru versus Rafael Feijão. Rafael Feijão has been around a very long time, a seasoned veteran in the sport. Started out with the Nogueira team, still with them. Also a BJJ black belt underneath that team. He also before he started MMA, was going to school to be a veterinarian. Stopped one year before completing it to fight, and here he is still fighting. So I don't know. He could work with dogs. He can continue to fight. <laughs> the possibilities are endless for Faye Zhao. And he does say in his fight with Patrick Cummins that he was overly aggressive. He said he let his aggression kind of take over where technique should have been, so he was really trying to get back and focus on the proper technique. Still keeping the aggression, but in control a little bit. 205 for the former Strike Force champ, Feijal. Good friend of your future and opponent, opponent Anderson currently Silva, ranked number Feijal. six in the world. Yes. I'm <laughs> like. <laughs> According to OSP's coach Joey Zonar, they worked really hard leading up to this fight on creating and attacking angles, which is something new for St. Pru. They really want to be ergonomic with their techniques in this fight, so watch out for that tomorrow night. Yeah, OSP said something funny that he wanted to work on his technique and have more people running into his punches. <laughs> Less chasing and having more people run into him. OSP always brings excitement. So Win or lose, every single time. He throws his bad intentions, the kicks, the punches. For me, he's one of the funnest fighters to watch on the roster. Agreed. For once. For once, yeah. <laughs> Don't let it happen again. <laughs> Two oh six for Open Saint Rue. <laughs> gotta say, Feijão looks good. You know, in the past we've seen him a little, a little heavier. Yeah, I think yeah. he looks good. I think the height's really gonna give us the advantage because he always fights long. Also, in the and heavyweight division, Roy Big Country Nelson versus Jared Rochon. First fighter to the scale, please welcome Jared Rochalt. Jared Rochalt heard all your criticism following his win at UFC 193, and guess what? He actually calls them fair. But don't think he's going to stand and trade with Roy Nelson tomorrow night. He says that would be foolish. He's going to try to grind out another victory. Of course, that would be the smart thing to try and do, but you know, the game plan is perfect on paper. Trying to put it into effect in the octagon is very, very different. Right on, 245. 245 for Sheridan Rochelle. defense is underrated. And his opponent, Riffin Las Vegas. Please welcome Roy, Big Country, 
Nelson. This is going to be a good fight. And you know, Roy was talking this week about going back to his jiu-jitsu. I'm assuming that's because, obviously, he's fighting a pedigree wrestler. Um, you would think he might be a bit stressed out coming into this fight. He's had some tough matchups lately, but no, he's he's all happy. He's fun and game. And the open workout, he had his young son messing around with him. So uh, he's happy. He's happy to fight, and he's not even getting undressed. Two fifty-eight. Two fifty-eight for Roy Don, Nelson. Don, you love when heavyweights are weighing in before you, don't you? The <laughs> Fast and Furious, in and They're out. They're in and out. They didn't even get get undressed for it. It's perfect. All right, twenty-two fighters down, just two to go. We now take a closer look at the two men on the marquee for tomorrow night's five-round welterweight main event. Take a look. No words can describe, unless you are a fighter, what it feels like to step in that octagon against somebody who's trying to rip your head off. This is what I was born to do, man. It really is. Steven Wonderboy Thompson versus Johnny Hendricks is a critical fight for the UFC's welterweight division. Now we have a Johnny Hendricks that's in desperado mode. Hendricks, big punch, oh, that's it. I'm treating this as number one contender shot. It's gonna be a great night for me. I'm not done with this division. I want to get back to the top, and I want to stay there. Johnny Hendricks is definitely the toughest opponent I've faced so far. Johnny Hendricks, he's in trouble. I think ever. Ah! He was the welterweight champion. Not only is he a really good wrestler, but he's got power in his hands. He's knocked some fighters out. My strength is going to be a huge factor in this fight. I want to see what he can do. When he tries to kick me the first time, and I throw a punch right back, that's when the fight starts. That's when all the fun begins. He's dangerous but he's never faced anybody like me. I don't think anybody has stepped in the ring has faced anybody like me. Steven Wonderboy Thompson, make no mistake about it, is one of the most dangerous strikers in the UFC. Oh. A victory over Johnny Hendricks will set him up as one of the elite of the elite. I'm working my way up. I know that I can beat this guy. I know I've trained hard enough. I'm gonna hit you back harder than you hit me. Oh. I'm gonna get back to where I wanna be. My goal is to be champion. I want my ranking back. How do I get that back? I go out there and I finish Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. First fighter to the scale, the number eight ranked welterweight in the world, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. And Wonderboy is a fitting name. He got that nickname early in his career. At 15 years old in his first fight, he faced a guy who was about 25 years of age, went in there and beat him up, and the guy said, how did I, why did I get in there with that young boy? I wonder and why I got in. he became the wonder boy. I love it. Has a total kickboxing record of 57 and zero with his amateur wow. pro career with 40 knockouts. I mean, that's unheard of. It's crazy. It doesn't matter who you faced, when you fought that much and had that many knockouts, you are nasty on your feet. Uh, he started out by working at his family's karate academy, becoming a full-time pro fighter afterwards, and is currently on a five-fight win streak. I mean. This is a fight. I can't wait. 170. 170. Five fight win streak. Three of those victories came by knockouts yes. in the UFC as well. So, as you said, Dominic, the true knockout artist. The former UFC welterweight champion, Johnny Big Ray. Well, on the flip side, obviously, we've got Johnny Hendricks, and he's a little annoyed. He feels that the division has kind of passed him and uh, forgotten about him somewhat, which is crazy when you think about it. His only recent losses have been a really close decision to George St. Pierre and a razor uh, close loss to Robbie Lawler. Other than that, this guy is going out there and he's beating people. He knows what he's up against with uh, Stephen Thompson. He knows he has to close the distance. He feels, though, if he gets in his face, closes the distance, then his kicks won't matter and then he's in Johnny's world. And by that, I mean in the wrestling world. 170. 170 for Johnny Hendricks. And he's kind of correct. If he closes that distance, it could be, you know, a very, very tough night for Stephen Thompson. That's a lot of distance to close at a man who's good at keeping the distance and yes. knows he has to. Absolutely, also. I agree. I love this matchup. And that, right, that makes, makes it, it such a great Thank fight. Thank you all so much for coming out to the way. Well, folks, stay right where you are as we guide you through tomorrow's action. Johnny Hendricks wants the title belt back around his waist, and the guys are going to tell you just how he can get his hardware back next on FS1.